We've seen several days of protests over the past week here in L.A. Demonstrators are now detailing their experiences with police officers and their use of force. Joining us this morning to talk about his experience is Dion Jones, an L.A. resident and former staffer in the Obama White House. Good morning, Dion. Hi, how are you? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm taking it day by day. Um, it's really painful to see what um, has been happening in our city uh, and against the citizens of Angelinos, particularly over uh, this weekend. Tell us about your experiences protesting Friday and Saturday and what led up the moments before you were shot with a rubber bullet. Yeah, thanks for having me share. Uh, I have been protesting about since Wednesday evening uh, here in the city, uh, particularly in the downtown area where I live. Um, Wednesday, Thursday, and then also Friday. Uh, Friday was a little bit more intense than the other two days. It's sort of when we began to be met with uh, police violence. Uh, that actually started as we made our way from City Hall through the streets of our you know, original routes through downtown LA. Uh, later on that evening, uh, we began to not only be met with them uh, as, you know, in the streets, as they began to shove us, um, tussle, and then begin to shoot their rubber bullets. We had made a decision as a group of protesters, peaceful protesters, that if we were met with police violence, that we would return to City Hall to make sure everyone was okay. We did return to City Hall. Once we returned to City Hall that evening, we were barricaded in. And essentially what happened is there was no curfew and we were aware of any, we weren't aware of any curfew as well. And so the police barricaded us in until an order went down that gave them a reason for them to arrest us. We were all put under arrest. We were all put in zip ties. We were all put on the sheriff buses in the individual cages with two people that was meant for, that should have been meant for one with no regard of the police practicing social distancing standards or any regard for our human, human dignity. Uh, and then we were sent downtown to the precinct to be cited. Um, essentially, the neck after getting out after some hours, um, the next day uh, on Saturday, we went to the park to begin the protest in the Fairfax district, peaceful rally that included young people, senior citizens, um, you know, professionals, etc., uh, all peacefully protesting the brutality that we're seeing against, particularly people of color. Uh, by the hands of police and the killings of people of color by the hands of police. Uh, essentially, we began to march uh, through the streets. We were again met with the line of police in riot gear. As we were peacefully protesting and asking them to let us through, uh, they did not want to let us do that. Um, a police cruiser became lit on fire. Uh, that smoke began to billow. Peaceful protesters were trying to find a safe way to disperse as the police has never given us that throughout the weekend. Uh, and then they began beating us, tussling with us, beating us with their batons, pepper spraying us. And as many stories have um, been told, uh, been shooting their rubber bullets at people in very deadly areas, whether it's the face, the heart, the head, the kneecap. Uh, and unfortunately, I was hit in the face by a police officer uh, and essentially just think of the person who is taking a lead, the person who hates you the most taking a lead pipe to your head. Mm -hmm. That was the pain that I felt. Uh, and then the 60 seconds of the immediate ringing, I actually thought it was my countdown to death. Uh, once I was able to be taken to Cedars Sinai emergency room, I found out that the police had broken two bones in my face, busted my face open here on the side where you see the stitches, and I have a head injury. Oh my gosh. Hmm. I'm so sorry you're dealing with those injuries. Dion, what is the solution? It's so hard to fathom what you went through. We've seen the protests calm down, but there's usually when we see protesting, it gets really intense and then it dies down, but we don't want to forget what happened. Yeah, one solution is that we have to we have to make a uh, very adamant stance when it comes to prosecuting police officers who kill people, period, point blank. 
The second thing is we have to make sure that we are not putting funds in, a, in the hands of police officers and a department who have shown a commitment to violence against the citizens that they have been told that they are uh, going to have, have that they've said that they're going to protect and serve. It was encouraging to see the mayor's uh, Facebook post last night, but we need to see clear action and unequivocal answers when it comes to the three billion dollars that he has uh, said that he wants to give the LAPD. That is unacceptable. I think that we should be looking at the ways that that money can be invested that makes our community safer and better, that doesn't include increasing force that will be against the citizens of LA. Dion Jones, thank you so much for joining us, sharing a very traumatic experience and just your singular story is a story that's been experienced by so many people who were protesting on the front lines. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. I thank you so much. And the last thing I'll just say, all this talk about the COVID and us, you know, getting coronavirus because of our uh, ability to protest. We have done everything we can to make sure that we are properly social distancing, but we have determined that the visible threat of inequality and the visible threat that we've seen of being killed is a far more greater purpose and a far more greater fight than the invisible threat that has come to kill us. Yeah, it shows what kind of risk you're taking when you head out there. Thank you, Dion. Thank you.